everybody, welcome to Demon Kitty Creations. I'm your host Tashi. This is my husband Matt. And we have another Universal Yums unboxing. I know we just did one, but I was kind of behind on December's box. So here's January's. The Netherlands. <laughs> and we got a sticker that says, I went flavor picking in the Netherlands from my kitchen table. <laughs> Here's a box. Box. Yep, this is a box. Or a book. Whichever term Here's you prefer. Here's a book. <laughs> Craziness. And we'll just get right into it. Alright, we're going to start with caramel stroopwafels. Taste the original Dutch sensation. It's Mac and Alex. Or Max and Alex. Did you know Dutch children are the happiest in the world? There are many potential reasons for that. Impressive infrastructure and top-notch education, to name a few. Our theory, syrup waffles. Yes, you read that right. We're talking about the Netherlands national cookie, the Stroop waffle. Back in the 1840s, bakers in Gouda, the town, not the cheese, used leftover cookie crumbs and caramel to create the original Stroop waffle. It was an overnight sensation, and now the cookies are a scrumptious staple of Dutch childhood, mm, excuse me, but don't just chomp into your stroop waffle as tempting as it may be. The Dutch have developed an art to the to stroop waffle eating. Place your cookie over a mug filled with your favorite hot beverage, hot cocoa, coffee, warm milk. Wait two minutes and then dig in. Each warm, gooey, decadent plate will have you feeling as happy as a Dutch kid. And just wait till you discover the rest of what's in store for this delicious Dutch adventure. Okay, well. We are not going to do what they suggested because that takes more time and we don't have more time. <laughs> and I don't drink coffee or tea. Or really anything warm. You drink hot chocolate occasionally. Yeah, that's true. I forgot about hot chocolate. Hot stroopa waffle coffee. Chocolate. Words. You realize this is two separate ones that you just bit into. <laughs> Oops! <laughs> I thought that it was a... Like a sand... No. The two... Yeah. Oops. I'm gonna do the same thing, so... Oh my god. Isn't it good? I haven't gotten that far. It was so hard to bite into. I think they're amazing. Not hard, but firm. Yeah, they're not crunchy or anything, but they are firm. Hmm. I love them. Hmm. Oh, gosh. I just read what's next. Did you? Sour cream and onion potato chips. Ridiculously creamy, the Dutch do it better. Odds are you've already eaten a Dutch onion. That's because 95% of them are exported all around the world. In fact, when it comes to agricultural exports, the Netherlands is second only to the U.S., despite being 237 times smaller. But let's be clear, with sour cream tang and the perfect sprinkling of salt, odds are you've never had Dutch onion like this. It's a green bag. Yeah? Oh, there's a Choco Stroop Waffle, apparently, which I guess we'll get to later. Spoiler alert. They aren't in here. Huh. It's got to be a first. Huh. I'll have to email them. You know, it's not that oh, I... wait. We're putting together, when putting together this box, we narrowed it down to three outrageously delicious Dutch potato chip flavors, but then we couldn't pick. So fate picked for you. Look through your box to find out which one you got. So they only sent oh, one of them. Oh, okay. So we only, we either got sour cream and onion, salt and pepper potato chips, or cheese and onion. Is that it there? Or there? Oh no, the black bag, you're right. Yep, looks like we got the salt and black pepper. 
Um, I'm thankful we didn't get the sour cream and onion because I made myself sick on them once and I don't eat sour cream and onion chips anymore. <laughs> All right, so salt and pepper potato chips, classic seasoning on a one of a kind chip. If you got these in your box, you're in for a luxury chip. Peppercorns used to be so costly in the Netherlands that locals started describing expensive things as pepperder or as expensive as pepper. Thankfully, pepper is a lot more accessible nowadays, but pepper chips this addictive are still as special as can be. One pepper chip for you. Okay. And one pepper chip for me. Tastes like a pepper chip. Or a potato chip with pepper on it. Not bad. Not bad, but nothing to write home about. Yeah. They're good. Okay. Okay. I can get behind it. All right, chew is the Dutch chew. Dutch candy cars. Juicy strawberry, black currant, and cherry. Candy shaped like cars, it's a Dutch thing. The famous Dutch confectionery Auto Jump has been making these iconic car themed sweets since 1965. Their product lineup includes parking attendants, steering wheels, and of course, their best selling Cadillacs. We could go on about how they take you on a long, juicy, chewy ride, but it's better to just let you go on a taste drive. <clears throat> okay, I kind of want the strawberry. Do you want strawberry? Mm -hmm. Strawberry for you? I will try the black currant. I don't know that I know what a black currant tastes like. I don't know, yeah. How do you know which one's which? Shut the one back. Ah. So the or so Swedish fish comes to mind. They're very hard to chew into. Mm. They're the kind of gummies I don't like because they get stuck in your molars. Mm. This could be a little bit. We'll be back. And we're back. Those were good, but they were just very tough to chew. Very. Yeah. Very. And ugh. while we were gone, uh, we decided to try each of the other's flavors. So she had strawberry as well, and I had a black currant. And did you enjoy the strawberry? I enjoyed the strawberry. The black currant I enjoyed, but not as much as the strawberry. I guess because it's a different flavor I've never tried before. I just mm. enjoy the familiar better. I don't really know how to describe the black currant. Um, I mean, at first it tasted exactly like the strawberry, but then there's just a a juice that hits your tongue and it's heavier, I'll say. Yeah. Um, not bad, but again, chewy. All right, so next we've got sour watermelon candies, which I think are in the little grab bag. Yum bag. Uh, let's see, a burst of watermelon in, with every chew. In 1987, the Dutch company Copert Kress discovered the world's smallest watermelon in South America, and they did what anyone would do. They took the one-inch wonder back to the Netherlands and grew more. Now, we're not saying this chew is quite as amazing as a real tiny watermelon, but with its lip-puckering, mind-blowing sourness, it's a very close second. Look at this. It's blue. The, the bag's wearing bag off. wore off on my finger when I tried to open it. Nice. Good job, it. No, I finally got it. Okay. Sour watermelon. Look at that dude. <laughs> that almost looks like a, um, a warhead. Yeah, that's what I was thinking when I pulled it out. Wait, these are lemon. Wait. Here's the watermelon. Okay. I wonder if the lemon is... Okay, well, heads up. <laughs> we'll we just keep that. getting all kinds of heads ups. Mm hmm. Yay. Not so sure I'm gonna like sour anything, but. Ha. 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 
Oh. <laughs> I don't like it. Not a fan. <laughs> I kind of like it. Ugh. You didn't even give it a chance. It's just now starting to come off into my mouth. No, I bit into it as soon as I got it because I thought it would be chewy. No, that's definitely a hard candy. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was unpleasant. Um, this could be a... To me. Wow. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be right back while he chews. Okay, we're back, and that took forever, but for you it will only be about one second. Yeah, it was like a ten minute thing, and okay. I was actively trying to chew it, but it kept alternating between hard and chewy. And the one time that I did manage to bite through it, I ended up clacking my teeth, so decided not to do that again. Oh well. Yeah. So, those were awful. <laughs> I liked it, but it just... It, it's long lasting. Don't make any plans. Uh, <laughs> so next we've got aged Gouda cheese crispies. Crunchy, cheesy, and authentically Dutch. Let's head to Gouda to try some, well, Gouda. But don't be fooled. Gouda, the cheese, didn't actually originate in Gouda, the town. Originally made in the surrounding area in the 12th century, it took on the name because the town of Gouda had a monopoly on the sale of cheese. Luckily, the monopoly is no more, so you don't need to fly to Gouda to try Gouda. You can just crunch into these crisps. We'll stop saying Gouda now, at least for a bit. Hmm. They smell like cheese ups They probably taste like them, too. Do they really? They smell like cheese ups They really do. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They kind of taste like them, too. <laughs> Um, probably like the white cheese ones, mm. not the mm -hmm. regular ones. And there is a bit of an aftertaste to it. Yeah. Good, but yeah. If you're not really adventurous, um, that might be a good place to start because it's familiar. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. All right. At least if you're in the States, I don't know where all cheese ups exist. You mean there are people out there that might not have to, you know what? I'm fat. I'm just gonna let it go. <laughs> Soft licorice and fruit gummies. Fruit and licorice make quite the juicy combo. Now I'm not a fan of licorice, so I'm just gonna say that outright. And neither am I. But we're gonna do this for, for you. you. The average Dutch person buys more licorice than toothpaste, a whopping four pounds per year. That explains why each and every Amsterdam candy shop is lined with jars after jars of drop, which is the local name for licorice. In every shape and flavor imaginable, from salty hearts to sweet coins, with these yum, you'll taste our favorite version, a gummy that's half drop, half extra juicy fruit. Good job. Well, that one belongs to the cats now. I don't know if they can eat those. I don't know either. There. I think that's orange. And I think we're about to find out because Kai's all over it. <laughs> Kai is the cat in our thumbnail. He was going to be in the video, but he decided he didn't like the camera. No, he decided he wanted to play in the bathtub. All right, here goes something. Again, super chewy. Like, I don't think I've managed to break into it yet. The licorice isn't bad. It's almost got a chocolatey texture or a te um, signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. So it almost tastes like one of those uh, chocolate oranges. Mm -hmm. That's not bad at all. <laughs> How about it? Okay. That's not bad. Oh, is he still over there? Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought I saw him. All right. So next we've got sour violet candies. Never has a flower been so mouth-watering. Time to stomp and smell the flowers. No better place than the Kukinoff Garden 
in the Dutch town of Lisse. Familiarly known as the Garden of Europe, this 80-acre spectacle is refreshed with 7 million flower bulbs every year. It's a wrapped candy. Uh, tulips, daffodils, violets, they've got it all, but not all Dutch flowers are for sniffing. Some like these unique, unique violet-flavored candies are for savoring for a full six minutes, according to the candy innovators who made it. So this is going to be another one of those off-camera things. Is there only the one? I'm trying to find one. I keep pulling out these red ones. There we go. Oh, yeah. Yay, more sour. All right. There goes something. The things we go through for you guys. I know. Hope you appreciate it. Yeah, you better. <laughs> mm. This doesn't taste like anything I would expect Violet to taste like. That, that's caramel right out the gate. Did I grab the wrong candy? I don't know. Let me show you. Yeah. Okay, so read that. So these are actually Salmiaki candies. The Netherlands' be beloved salty licorice. There's no debate that Dutch are obsessed with salty licorice or Salmiaki. They use it to flavor ice cream, liqueurs, you name it. What's more debatable is whether you'll love it as much as the Dutch. Even our office is divided. Sarah, our website manager, spat this yum out. But Bill, our graphic designer, can't get enough. Try this Dutch fave and find out. Are you more of a Sarah or a Bill? If it's the former, feel free to use it as a permanent golf ball. But I think the statement stands. It's This is going to be one of those 10-minute deals. Yeah, six I minutes. went ahead and spit mine out. Quitter. I wrapped it up. Quitter. I'll eat it later. All right, we'll be back. we are back once again hopefully that's the last one uh because we did go ahead and jump from the salmiakis i think they were yep salmiaki candies which took a really bad turn like halfway through it just went i don't even know how to describe it but it just went it was like a sludge flavor wise i couldn't i couldn't tell you though um so we jumped right into the sour violet candies which um Tashi said that those started off um, like cough syrup, uh, but they got really sweet. They're really good. So uh, definitely would do more of those in the future. Um, I feel like we just did some of these last month with the crude notes. Possible? I definitely remember that word. Um, but the cats are playing. Yeah. Um, Chocolate covered crude note and cookies. Milk, white, and dark chocolate spice cookies. If you received last month's holiday box, you'll recognize these spice crude note. Okay, it helps to read the paragraph, I guess. As the Netherlands go to winter cookie. Well, we didn't think the Dutch delicacy could get any better, but the folks over at the Bolletje factory in El Mello proved us wrong by smothering them in decadent white milk and dark chocolate. After you try one, be sure to say Bedank Bol. Lite, which means thanks, Bolite, whenever you're done saying, mm, that is. All right, do you want milk, dark, or white? We'll do milk. Milk for you. And my favorite, dark, for me. Chocolate is not the first thing I taste. I hate to say it, but they taste it better without the chocolate. You might be right. These are... Every time we get a box, we take it up to my parents' house. And these were my brother's favorite thing in the world. He absolutely adored those cookies. And I think he'd agree with me that they taste better without the chocolate. But my brother's not a huge chocolate fan anyway, so... And he, he's nine, so that's saying something. Mm-hmm. All right. Dutch Speculus. Coziest spice cookies ever you decide. If it's your first... Wow, that's a big box. 
If it's your first time seeing the word speculos, you might be imagining old-timey eyeglasses. Luckily, the Netherlands' number one cookie is a whole lot tastier than spectacles. Their name actually comes from the Latin word speculum, meaning mirror. As the spice cookies designs mirror those on the stamp used to print them, these ones are just as cute looking as they are cinnamony. You don't need spectacles to see that. Speculum, isn't that a... Uh... Let's not go into what a speculum is. So you're confirming? Yes. Okay. Don't want to eat that. Or do you? Gotta keep them happy. <laughs> you can edit that out if you have to. I don't have to, and I won't. But give me a bite of that cookie. These cookies are huge. That's not the only thing. Very good. Mm -hmm. The cinnamon doesn't jump out at me, but they're very good. Very, very good. I love a good spice cookie. Hmm. Let me put that on top of your stew waffle. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you had it. Oh, um, because you guys wouldn't know this, I actually ate all of one of the stew waffles in between takes. And if it wasn't for the fact that other people have to try this stuff, I would have ate the other one. <laughs> all right next we've got hazelnut cream milk chocolate bar dutch cocoa plus rich hazelnut cream filling there are a few iconic things about this yum first the packaging it depicts the 1897 reading board that helped generations of dutch children learn to read including royals like princess juliana it'll teach you the dutch words for monkey nut cat brother and sister that is, if you can resist tearing straight into the second iconic thing about this famous Dutch sweet, the rich chocolate and smooth hazelnut cream. It's a gold bar. <laughs> Are we getting a tour of Willy Wonka's factory? <laughs> I don't want that after what happened to those poor kids. <laughs> That's thick. That's what she said. <laughs> Apparently, we are no longer family friendly. Mm. I never considered this channel to be for kids, anyways. <laughs> Other crumbs. It's good. Mm. That is. That's probably the best chocolate hazelnut candy bar I've ever had. That is some sweet, rich chocolate. I like it. Now we can just wrap it up. Apparently I can. Close enough, good enough. Moving on. Mm. I wish we'd done the next thing before that though. Yeah, no kidding. And that is because it is time for the Dutch Licorice Bites. More licorice! Shaped like canal houses, taste like magic. <clears throat> what do you pack when you go on vacation? Wallet, money, and licorice, if you're Dutch. You already know the Dutch love licorice, but did you know that a majority of Dutch vacation goers won't go on vacation without it? It's like a little taste of home, and we mean that literally. At least when it comes to these drops, literally shaped like Dutch canal houses. Ready to try the Netherlands candy Dutch folks literally don't go without? Do you want to just split one so it's not a whole host of... <laughs> You're lying. Put it in your mouth. It's like licorice. I have had worse licorice though. I can't do it. As licorice goes, that's not bad. Still not a fan, but I've definitely had worse. 
<clears throat> Why are they so obsessed with licorice? I don't know. Not cool, man. Not uh, cool. Cheddar and raspberry cheese crispies. That's the roca. Okay, that sounds pretty damn good. Sweet, savory, and absurdly addictive. Four pounds of licorice per year is a lot, no doubt. But even that pales in comparison to the 37 pounds of cheese Dutch folks <laughs> eat per year. <laughs> Whether it's bread and cheese sandwiches for breakfast or cheese cubes at the bar or a snack of these iconic cheddar crispies flaked with bits of real raspberry, Dutch folks can't get enough. Take a bite and you'll get it, and 37 pounds suddenly won't seem like that much. That almost sounds like a threat to my weight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, not that I'm skinny as is. Sorry. Once again, they smell kind of like Cheez-Its. She left me with the broken one. I took a broken one. How was this chasing the air? Mm -hmm. The air return. The heat just kicked in and apparently he doesn't like the sound. There's the raspberry. I didn't taste it for the longest time. Oh, mm. Pretty good. Not bad. All right. Mm. So next we've got marshmallow candy sticks. They're not in here. Huh. Oh wait, something just holy. I was looking for something small. This is ain't small. Is it hard? Yeah. All right, so I'll read it to you and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do. <laughs> so it's a marshmallow candy stick, sweet marshmallow taste and a crunchy stick. To play golf, you need a study club called the Clique. I'm assuming they mean sturdy club called the Clique to hit your ball. Wield it responsibly. In the 15th century, many Dutch towns passed ordinances about where golf could be played because so many windows were being broken by rogue balls and cliques. With this marshmallow stick, you get the sweet flavor love on a crunchy stick, aka the world's tastiest clique, which hopefully won't break any windows. Uh -huh. Alright, do you have a plan of attack? Oh, okay, you broke it. Yep. I guess I get the rest of it. Do you chew it or suck on it? I chewed it. Well, that's a lot on my teeth. He has very bad teeth. Yeah. Um, we'll be back. That's good, but we'll be back. And we're back. <laughs> I was expecting that. Um, <laughs> so that thing was good. Um, I want to say the middle of it, the marshmallow part had a consistency like airheads mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really good i think i would have liked it better with just the consistency of airheads and not like the outer shell but um, yeah maybe i am happy to report though that all of our windows are intact thank you mm -hmm. all right next we've got cinnamon cookie sticks every inch is coated in warm dutch cinnamon that's it between 1640 and 1796, the Netherlands enjoyed control of the world's largest cinnamon supplier, 
Ceylon, which is now Sri Lanka. Ever since, the Dutch have been absolutely obsessed with the spice. You can consider these buttery cookie sticks tasty proof of that. They're completely coated with warm cinnamon sugar, making them the perfect complement to tea or coffee, or the perfect golf posts. Here. Hm. Man down. I can't get it. Time to bring out the big guns. Yeah. Helps if I hold it the right way. Mmm, smells good. Does it smell like, I don't know, cinnamon? No. Not bad at all. It's not bad, but I wouldn't consider it to be amazing. Cinnamon twist from Taco Bell. Yes. Very similar to that. It's not bad at all. All right, so next we've got Gouda and Indian Spice Biscuits. Made with the finest of finest blend of spices. Seeking con <laughs> Seeking to control the spice trade, the Netherlands created the Dutch East India Company and began trading with India in 1604. It became the world's first multinational corporation, the first to issue stock, and by the 18th century, the world's most wealthiest company by far. The most important impact of the company? These Dutch biscuits, made with Indian spices like turmeric, pepper, and nutmeg. Just kidding, kind of. You need the thing again. I guess not. Huh. Hmm. Looks like a mini Cheddar Bay biscuit from Red Lobster. That didn't work. I'm not a fan at all. That is like straight goldfish. And I'm not a fan of goldfish. He does kind of taste like goldfish. Like one of the weird off the wall flavors. Not straight up goldfish, but maybe like crappy pizza. <clears throat> I don't mind it. Well, those are all yours. <laughs> Next, we've got rosemary hummus chips. Fresh from the gardens of the Netherlands. Hummus is... Oh. All right. <laughs> hummus is one dish the Dutch didn't have to search for. It came to them. After the native Dutch, Turks, and Moroccans make up the next two largest ethnic groups in the Netherlands, the result of an influx of immigrants in the 1960s and 70s. That explains why there's a bounty of Middle Eastern restaurants in Amsterdam and why these hummus chips coated in aromatic rosemary are taking the country by storm. Talk about a universal yum. And apparently these are organic. They are organic, vegan, gluten-free, and no sugar added. So in other words, they're probably gross. So hard pass. Thank you. I'm hard pass anyways because rosemary, but I'm unfortunately here to try yums. Ugh, it smells like rosemary. Chippy for you. Chippy for me. And a chippy for me. How? That's two thumbs downs in a row. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, they come in paprika version. That sounds so much better. Probably. What's the other one? Sea salt. Oh, definitely that one would be good. Yeah. 
I don't like rosemary, so not into them. Like, I can see where somebody would like them. They are, the chip itself is tasty, but the rosemary on top of it is not. Yeah. All right, so now we've got the sour lemon candies that we alluded to earlier. It is the tartest candy in the Netherlands. <clears throat> Move over caviar, lemons were, were the must-have culinary status symbol of the 17th century Netherlands. After having potted lemon trees imported from the Mediterranean, elites candied their peels with sugar, chewed their leaves like gum, and even had the fruits painted. In fact, over half of 17th century Dutch still lives include a lemon. So whether you're playing call for popping this super sour lemon candy in your mouth, be sure to put your pinky up. When in doubt, pinky up. SpongeBob! <laughs> and these are unfortunately going to be one of those things that takes a little while to chew. So we will be back. Mm, I'm gonna let them get my facial expression because I hate sour shit. Oh, these are a completely different shape. The other ones were more of a ball, and these are more like a flat disc. Flat ish. Are you having a problem over there? Got it. Well, I guess that taste of rosemary out of my mouth. This hour comes in a minute. You mean it has a... All See what I'm talking about? <laughs> started, yep. We'll be back. <laughs> Again. And again. And again. And again. All right. So those are pretty good. They took a little while. She spit hers out. She's a cheater. Um, but yeah, those were good. Um, again, similar to Warheads. Um, let's see. We already did the Salmiaki candies earlier. So we'll just skip right on to the Black Olive and Aged Cheese Palmiers. Real cheese, real olives, real, real good. If you're a super foodie, you know you may know that palmiers, these crispy palm leaf shaped puff pastries, actually originated in France in the early 1900s, but don't be alarmed, this young couldn't be more Dutch. And not just because palmiers are insanely popular in the Netherlands, but because this one is infused with aged gouda and local black olives, which um, making a treat that's very, very making for a treat that's very, very Dutch and very, very delicious. We shall see. It does have garlic powder in it, though. Maybe that'll save it. And I'm only going to take a bite. Mm, we'll just split that one. Okay. It's got a little arch in it. Who's a cheater now? That wasn't on camera, was it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gonna have to edit that out. Yeah. Nope. I don't think anybody wants to see me. Ugh. Oh, well. You know what? If you want to watch, stay. If not, cheers. I don't think they were bad. <sighs> I could taste straight olive in that. It tasted like, like pizza. I do not like olives. Like cheese and olives. I liked it. Nope. Time for the chocolate stoop waffles. Yay! <laughs> Milk chocolate and caramel stoop waffles. Mm. Now remember, there's two in here. The Dutch classic for chocolate lovers. Before painting his masterpiece, The Starry Night, in 1989, really felt like that was older. Yeah, I thought it was too. Anyway. Van Gogh painted the much, much lesser known Starry Night over the Rhone in 1988. That's kind of how we feel about this young. It takes the basic concept of the stroop waffle, soft waffle, gooey caramel, and enhances it with a slathering of mountain-your-mouth chocolate. 
take a bite of this masterpiece and see if you agree. There's only one in here. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. The ingredients are listed on the back in Arabic. At least I think that's ingredients. Tastes like a Twix. Mm. It does. I actually like the uh, regular caramel stew waffle better. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, I can get Twix from anywhere. That's fair. But Twix without the chocolate? Now that's special. <laughs> I like it. I do too. So, what would you call your favorite yum? You know, looking back, I definitely like the sour violet candies. I think I'll go with maybe the hazelnut cream milk chocolate bar. That thing was nice. Nice smooth chocolate. Very, very good. Very staple-ish. Mm. Um, my favorite by far would have to be the caramel strip waffle. By far. And your least favorite? Decisions. Let me go with the thing that I spat out on camera. What was it called? Again? The black olives and cheese biscuits. Yeah. Not doing that ever again. Um, my least favorite would probably have to be, hmm, your right decisions. Um, the watermelon sour candy, because I couldn't even keep it in my mouth for a second. As soon as the taste hit my mouth, I was like, hmm. done. Yeah, that kind of was like, it didn't even last a second on my tongue. It's, uh, as far as the biscuits go. Um, anything else that was kind of borderline, I was able to power through, but those were just a hard, hard no. Yeah. Um, overall, good box, good box. Um, I am, I have to say, I'm glad that we switched from Boxu to Universal Yums because the different countries, I think, make it more interesting and more fun to try. And you're not every month sitting there opening the box going, oh, look, another sea urchin. Yeah. Yeah, because that, that was getting tiresome. And gross. And gross. Very gross. Um, and there's a lot less seafood in these boxes, which I'm thankful for because I don't really like seafood. And the boxu was very heavy on seafood. If you love seafood, <laughs> go for boxu. Um, you did mention something earlier, and I have to point out that you were right. Um, I was able to actually try everything in here, which was a nice change of pace. Um, being allergic to almonds, of course, I have to pay attention to the um, ingredients, and there was nothing here that jumped out at me, so that's a good. Yeah, that's yeah, a good thing. Um, this was definitely a good box for that. I'm excited to see where we go next month. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button. Uh, leave a comment down below what you think your favorite yum would be. Or if you buy the box, let me know what your favorite yum was. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Click the little bell to get notif- Get- did Click the little bell to get notifications every time I post. <laughs> <laughs> Until next month. Bye. <laughs>